Good morning, everybody, anybody, uh, and welcome to the meeting uh, on the subcommittee on zoning and franchise. Is I am Councilman Barry Grudenchik, and I will be pinch hitting today for Chair Moya, who could not be here today. Uh, at this time, we are uh, joined by my uh, colleague, the Chair of the Public Safety Committee, uh, Donovan Richards. Today, we will be holding a hearing on the New York City Police Department's 116th Precinct Site Selection Application, LU 61 and 62. This application for site selection and acquisition of a police precinct station house is accompanied by an application for a zoning change map to map a C1-3 commercial overlay into an existing R-32 district. The property is located at 242-20 North Conduit Avenue in Councilmember Richards District in Queens. The proposed actions would allow for the construction of a new 116th police precinct on an existing parking lot that is currently accessory to the existing facility. At this time, I would like to uh, ask Councilman Richards if he has any remarks he would like to make. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Chair uh, Grudenchik, and what a historic day for uh, all of Queens, but in particular Southeast Queens and Northern Queens? Eastern Queens. I always say Northern, but Eastern Queens. And uh, this precinct has been discussed and lobbied for for the past 40 to 50 years, uh, so five decades. I wasn't even born when the lobbying started for this precinct. Uh, but today I'm, I'm overjoyed to really see this particular step uh, being taken to really start to address many of the public safety concerns that the communities of Laurelton, Rosedale, and Springfield Gardens uh, have endured for a very long time. We have some of the longest response times uh, and this precinct is going to, to work to ensure that we can improve those response times. And more importantly, in this day and age where we're talking about uh, community and police relations, really ensuring that the community will have adequate resources, adequate staffing right in their community is going to really ensure that we can bind the community together with the police department in a way that we haven't seen uh, in the 105 precinct for a very long time. Not to say that the 105 doesn't try, but with limited resources and the particular lane mileage that the precinct covers, it almost makes it impossible for the officers to really come out and build a, a real relationship with the community. Um, so there are a lot of people to thank. Um, first, uh, obviously, Councilmember Grudenchik, who's really been a steadfast partner, all of the elected officials uh, from Southeast Queens who've been fighting for this for 40 years, uh, to the community, uh, Community Board 13, to uh, some of the leaders uh, from Laurelton, best to beat them, uh, who could not be here today, the civic associations, whether it's the Federated Blocks of Laurelton, uh, Concerned Citizens of Laurelton, the Rosedale Civic Association led by Marcia O'Brien. These are all of the individuals who really uh, played a huge role in, in getting this uh, precinct over the line. So I want to thank the NYPD, I want to thank the police commissioner, uh, and I also have to thank the mayor, you know, the mayor who, uh, I mean, we've had so many mayors who've come to <laughs> Southeast Queens over the uh, last 40 years making promises and did not keep the promises and spoke of how important it was to make sure public safety was happening uh, in our community. But this mayor really delivered uh, and really uh, he's to be commended for this. So I want to thank uh, you, Chair. I'm going to turn it back over to you. I want to thank my staff uh, who've worked on this and all of the land use staff who also has uh, played a, a role in this. So look forward to uh, the start of our conversation and, and certainly passing us eventually. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman Richards. And uh, just before I open the public hearing, I want to uh, thank somebody who hasn't been thanked, and that's Councilman Richards, um, who since he uh, has gotten into uh, the council has been uh, the leading proponent for a new station house in Southeast Queens. Um, we're going to hear later from uh, former chair of Community Board 13, Richard Hellenbrecht, who's here with us this morning. I want to thank the Community Board for their uh, steadfast. I was in Jamaica High School when they started, so I'm a little older than you. But I uh, want to thank them for their uh, steadfast um, support for this project and their advocacy. Um, We've had a number of chairs over the years, Richard being one of them, uh, the late Sue Narika being another, Brian Block, and now we have our current chair, Clive Davison. Um, they have fought, as have uh, all the civics up and down Eastern Queens um, from North Shore Towers. This 
This precinct, the 105 precinct, the current precinct, stretches from North Shore Towers all the way down to the little community of Meadowmere, which is tucked in underneath uh, JFK Airport and surrounded by Nassau County on uh, just about every side. And so it's a long run for the 105. Um, the Cross Island Parkway, especially at rush hour, is almost always jammed, and um, there aren't many ways to get up and down uh, the spine of Eastern Queens. So I am delighted. I also, of course, have to thank Mayor de Blasio. Um, he put his money where his mouth is, $70 million to get us off the ground here. So uh, we look forward to a discussion this morning, but at this time I am going to open up the public hearing on land use numbers 61 and 62. And I am going to call the first panel, which is uh, Mr. Philip Heller, who is Director of Capital Construction for the New York City Police Department. I'm going to ask the council to, uh, she'll do what she has to do. She's going to swear you in. Could you please state your name? My name is Philip Heller. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Yes. Good morning, Chair Grudenchik and members of the Council. I'm Philip Heller, Director of NYPD's Capital Construction Unit. On behalf of Police Commissioner James P. O'Neill, I am pleased to testify before your subcommittee today to discuss the NYPD's new 116th Precinct. During the course of NYPD's long and rich history, the department has been a pioneering leader in creating, identifying, and implementing the best and most successful training and policing practices. When we have new facilities constructed, they are built to the state of the art at that time, designed to meet the needs of the department, its brave officers, and the communities we serve. The same can be said for our delineation of, of precinct boundaries. This does not mean that we should remain static. The evolution of technology, policing methods and community needs, as well as population growth, population concentrations, and general development of the city, to name a few, necessitates a regular re-examination of the department's approach, existing facilities, staffing, resources, and policing methods. What was once state-of-the-art becomes dated, what was once sufficient becomes less so, and what was once effective must give way to a fresh approach. Under this administration, this department has been diligent in examining the way we police in the 21st century, our philosophy, our staffing needs, our equipment, and our facilities. When it comes to the department's physical infrastructure, we improve it where we can and replace it where we must. The new 116th Precinct will be the, will be the latest example of an innovative approach to building police facilities by including nearly 1,000 square feet of space dedicated for community use. This is a physical expansion of our neighborhood policing model, where police can be more fully integrated into the community. Neighborhood policing is the cornerstone of today's NYPD. The foundation of this philosophy is building relationships, increasing communication, and creating partnerships with members of the community. It is a joint effort to decrease crime, a partnership with the community we proudly serve. By sharing space, our offers will be more in touch with what is happening in the community and will be able to work more effectively with our community partners. Furthermore, the 116th Precinct is a necessary step in streamlining the NYPD's operations in Southeast Queens. As the population has grown and shifted, the burden of the 105th Precinct has increased. It is one of the city's largest precincts, requiring officers to cover 12.43 square miles of land and 354 miles of roadway. As a result, response times in the 105th Precinct are approximately two minutes longer than the city average. The new 116th Precinct will cover a little more than half of the 105th Precinct's current territory, which we believe will not only help lower response times, but will also enable our officers to more effectively respond to community needs and build the necessary relationships that neighborhood policing calls for. I'll now go through the presentation and welcome any questions from the council members at the conclusion of this presentation. So, there we go. so first, uh, just a little bit about the location. The site is uh, in uh, far southeast Queens. Uh, you see the, the image on the right shows the actual site adjacent to the Rosedale Long Island Railroad Station. Uh, you see the Belt Parkway uh, very close by. 
So we're building, as uh, Council Member Gradenchik said, we're, we're building on a uh, parking lot which is adjacent to our existing building. We're calling this, the existing building is the 105th Precinct Annex. Currently, uh, officers serving the southern sectors of the 105 turn out of this building. What that means is that there's essentially just a locker room in that building. The officers report to work here. This does not have the full functions of a police precinct station. So by having the, the parking lot adjacent to this existing building, it gave us an opportunity to build. This is just some scenes of the surrounding neighborhood. Um, it's a very small scale neighborhood. Um, one, two story uh, homes, single family homes. This is a diagram that the architects put together just talking a little bit about the, the nature of the neighborhood and also the relationships. Again, that relation, that combination of uh, bringing the police and the community together via a mediator and civic connector. So this is manifest in the design of the building as well as in our programs. The overall diagram of the building is such that we have uh, the police functions, which are essentially the blue uh, bar in this diagram, and then the community functions, which is the, the sort of yellow bar. Uh, these both face a public plaza, which will be designed in between the existing 105 Annex building and our new building. Provides, again, that uh, a civic public space for that connection between the uh, NYPD and the, and the community. There's a community room, you'll note, at the corner uh, uh, directly facing this plaza, and we'll see a little bit more about that in the design. So the design of the, of the precinct is, uh, is the, the blue shape in this diagram. We, when we placed the building here, we obviously needed to relocate some of the existing parking. So we are in an arrangement with the Department of Transportation to utilize a portion of their parking lot, which is to the west across Francis Lewis Boulevard. This is a monthly commuter lot which is underutilized, so we have an arrangement with them to use this for off-street parking. We are also increasing our off-street parking by providing a parking lot directly in front of the existing 105 Annex building, and we have surface parking directly behind and actually underneath our new building. So there's uh, actually two rows of parking um, uh, directly behind our building. And then you also see the new public open space and plaza. Important to note is that directly adjacent to our existing building is the Long Island Railroad entrance to the Rosedale Station. This is the only accessible entrance to that train station. We will maintain that entrance as an extension of our public plaza. In terms of the floor plans, uh, we are, our current NYPD standard program for a new precinct is about 45,000 square feet. Uh, this is when many of our buildings are in the 20,000 square foot range. So this really does provide a model for modern policing. We, we're locating the main entrance directly off the, the public plaza. We also have the community room directly adjacent to the public plaza. So this is really a physical manifestation of neighborhood policing. The fact that the community room is directly adjacent to the exterior and has its own dedicated entrance, which is on the, uh, the top side of this plan. Um, so entrances are available from the lobby of the police station, but also from the, uh, directly from the outside. Uh, otherwise, this, this contains the community room itself, the muster community room, um, and all other police functions. The second floor of the building the, is essentially offices and mechanical space. The more public offices, which would be community affairs, the NCOs, and precinct planning are directly at the front of the building, again, adjacent to that public plaza. Uh, the detective, st detective suite is at the north side in that uh, shaded area. Uh, mechanical rooms are provided on the south side as a buffer, uh, partly for the community, but also for the building itself, um, a buffer really to the Long Island Railroad. And finally, in the, in the basement, locker rooms and incoming utility services. So I'll emphasize that the, the renderings that we're seeing um, are, are about three months old. This is part of our ULIP presentation. The, the design has actually advanced quite a bit beyond this. But this gives us an overall idea as a diagram of the importance of the community room and the importance of openness for the police station. Um, it's a two-story building. Uh, we anticipate that it will be a rhythm of precast panels, precast concrete panels, and glass, um, emphasizing that need for privacy and security, but also openness to the community. Finally, uh, a, a rough idea of what the building will start to look like from the plaza. Community room is on the left side, and the NYPD entrance is directly in front of you in this diagram, and this will be developed a lot further in terms of the actual design. And finally, if we're on the, uh, the train platform of the Rosedale Station, um, a view of what the building would look like from that location. 
this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, just a, um, a couple of questions. Uh, of course, the, when I announced this at the 105 Precinct Community Council, uh, I took one question after everybody cheered and they wanted to know how long it would take. So that's really um, <laughs> at the top of our minds. Yes, how long it will take. So we're currently in design right now. We're in design development, which means um, essentially we're really working on the, the overall interior layout, the mechanicals, et cetera. We, uh, design will be complete uh, February of next year, February of 2019. We anticipate, following that, we there's a bid period, so we anticipate award of a construction contract about November of next year, November 2019. Um, we sh currently show a construction completion in roughly April of 2022. Uh, we are keen on trying to shorten that as much as possible to get it within the calendar year 2021. That would be wonderful. Um, the glass, of course, that you have will be bulletproof and as proof as can be. Yes. So our, our requirements for new police stations is that uh, at the first floor level, we require bullet resistance um, on, on all surfaces. So, for example, the community room itself will be bullet resistant, um, all, the, all the main entrances and the community rooms. We, there are blast requirements we have as well, um, which means no operable windows on the first floor. We, do, we are thinking about operable windows on the second floor just in terms of mechanical balancing. It kind of works. Um, but bullet resistance is, is required at the first floor. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Richards. All righty, I'm ready. Thank you, Chair uh, Gradenchik. All uh, righty, so I'll start and very obviously uh, pleased to see the lactation room added to, and I think yes, that's, that's, we have that's great. Yes. Um, uh, so let's go through parking. So I know one of the concerns right. that most uh, communities have when it comes to <laughs> any precincts coming in is, is how parking will work. Absolutely. So how many parking spots on and off street right, parking so spots? Currently what we're looking at is 163 off street parking spaces. Um, this is a combination of the parking that's actually on site. So there's parking directly below and behind our building, the parking that's directly in front of the 105 annex. There's an existing surface parking lot, which you see on the left hand of this slide. Mm -hmm. This is actually a DOT controlled lot. There's uh, about 25 spaces there. Uh, as well as the, um, the parking that I mentioned on the west side of Francis Lewis Boulevard. Right. So that's roughly 40-ish spaces uh, in that location. And that's total 163. And you have a formal agreement with DOT? We're, we are finalizing that formal agreement. Um, we have um, every documentation about the, the agreement. We just need to finalize exactly what form that takes. Okay. Uh, let's talk about jobs and MWBE goals. Uh, will there be local hiring opportunities uh, through this process? And uh, which organization? Is it Hire NYC or who will right. be uh, handling? So I, I would defer to Department of Design and Construction for the specifics of that, but I do know they, they do have MB, MWBE requirements. Um, I, I don't know the specific numbers for that. Department of Design and Construction administers the contracts for this. but. Um, they could provide the information. Okay, so if they could, that, yeah. could have them reach out, sure. so we can have a deeper conversation about that. Um, wanted to know, obviously, there's going to be plaza space, so this space will be open to the community? Yes. All righty. And can you go through uh, maintenance and programming? So if the community wanted to utilize the plaza space for community events and, and who's going to obviously maintain so we don't end up with a plaza that's right. <laughs> uncomfortable. Absolutely. So the, the entire facility is an NYPD facility. That includes the, the public plaza. So we will be responsible for maintenance of everything in that plaza. In terms of um, in the plaza and the community room. In terms of programming, we really anticipate that the local command and community members jointly work out the programming requirements. We, what, we, what we've done is to build into the infrastructure um, opportunities for security and openness, essentially. So. There are doors which can be locked. Um, yeah, after hours, if the if if the uh, decision is that the community room is not accessible, which we would probably anticipate, um, yeah, that's that's possible. We'll have cameras um, at the exterior as well. Um, but it's really up to the the local command and the community to figure out exactly how it's programmed. I will say that the what we're really providing is a smaller room 
than the muster room. So typically the muster room is about 2,000 square feet. Okay. This is often where we hold precinct community council meetings. Mm -hmm. um, the community room is smaller, 800 to 900, almost 1,000 square feet. So we don't anticipate that level of activity in that room, okay. but it can be formal meetings. It can be very informal activities as well. So really, leave it, it's, it's an open floor. There's no fixed furniture in that. Um, so the possibilities are kind of open and endless. Um, can you speak to the boundaries? So which areas right. will the 116 uh, cover? So the, the planning for this precinct is that it will cover, cover, in general, the southern sectors of the 105. Uh, the exact precinct boundaries haven't been determined yet. They will be determined as we get closer to actually opening. Um, but that is the general premise, is the southern portion of the 105. So Laurelton, Rollsdale, Springfield Garden? Certainly those neighborhoods, yes. Okay. Um, the actual northern boundary, um, we have discussed um, up to, there's the cemetery, Montefiore Cemetery, I think okay. up in that vicinity okay, is kind of where we cool. saw, just based on current sector boundaries. <laughs> so, um, but that's to be finalized. Right, and uh, what impacts on the 105, and, and can you speak to sort of what, uh, what benefit, uh, can you speak to the benefits of bringing this local precinct? Like, what, <laughs> you know, great benefit. Um, so, um, so one is just response times. Um, very clearly, uh, while while we do have 105 officers who turn out here, who begin their tour here, and are assigned to the southern sectors, um, still that ability to cover from from the main station house is limited because of just the distance away. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing is just having all the benefits of a local command. So just a detective squad, the community affairs officers here, the NCOs actually turn out here and have offices here. Um, and then really providing the community space. Mm -hmm. um, so all the benefits um, and services that a local precinct provides will be here, and they're currently not. And uh, I'm assuming the Department of Transportation is part of this conversation. So I know they have a field of dreams um, located adjacent to the site. Right. Uh, so where are we at with that? And also, obviously, the streets in that particular area need curbing and repaving so that you don't have to keep your police cars in, uh, going into the repair shop every day. That would be nice. Um, so, so has DOT uh, shown a commitment to addressing some of the underlying issues in right. this part of the community? Right, so there have been conversations with the Department of Transportation about, um, about fixing a lot of uh, streets, curbs, et cetera, in the neighborhood. Um, we, we're not directly involved in that. We, uh, we, we fully endorse um, any repairs that can be made in, these, in, in the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, we were in conversation with them about utilization of their lots, which we're very appreciative of. We really would not be able to do this if that was not mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we conducted a site search uh, via th through DCAS um, for city-owned and privately-owned sites, and nothing was sufficient and available. Um, so really, DOT uh, made this happen for us. Uh, the, the existing DOT lot, which is directly to the east of our parking lot, I know that there, are, there have been discussed uh, utilization plans by Department of Transportation for Safety City. Um, I, can't, I can't speak directly to the status of that project. Okay, so before we obviously pass this, um, you know, we certainly want to hear more concrete plans from DOT on uh, the repaving, the curbing, and also some transportation studies for that particular area. It is a, yes. a gateway to uh, Green Acres Mall, so we get yes. a, a lot of yeah, we uh, <laughs> a lot of traffic there, obviously, uh, consistently. So we want to make sure it's safe for officers as well we uh, as they come out as well, and, and for the public as well. Um, lastly, I'll touch to any benefits for officers in this precinct, is there a gym or uh, any other amenities yeah, so for them? Yes, so um, one is it's a modern facility that's yeah. actually <laughs> large enough to, <laughs> to suit their needs, um, which is saying something um, for those of you who have been to our facilities. Uh, so main thing would be just openness and daylight, the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the ability to uh, see outside from your offices, <laughs> um, uh, among other amenities, um, suitable, I'll just go to the cellar, suitable locker space. Mm -hmm. So um, our locker requirements are that they're, they're pretty large. We have a tactical bag, which is very large. Um, so it's a two foot by two foot locker with a little bench attached. Um, also currently all officers have smartphones, so we provide power outlets in those lockers. Um, so the smartphones can be located there. Uh, we have a stress reduction room, oh, which beautiful. is essentially that like physical fitness room. Beautiful. Um, so that, that is located on the, in this plan as well. Um, and really just uh, you know, a modern, clean, efficient facility. 
I will also emphasize that um, we meet, um, we will be meeting current city requirements for energy efficiency. Beautiful. Um, DCAS has a lot of good initiatives, so we're looking forward to their assistance in terms of some funding. We have, um, I'm not showing a roof plan here, but planning on photovoltaics on the roof to Beautiful. supplement power. Uh, uh, we um, highly energy efficient uh, building envelope and energy efficient systems uh, for the building. So, um, yeah, good use of civic resources. Great, last question. Uh, so, obviously we wanna make sure the community stays up to date and that there's consistent communication with the uh, uh, surrounding neighborhood and obviously civic leaders and electeds who've been engaged in the community board who's been engaged in this process. Uh, so I know I mentioned, uh, I think a few weeks ago when we met the, um, the commitment, we would want a commitment for forming an advisory board yes. to be a part of this as the, the process uh, goes through and uh, until the precinct is obviously built. Mm -hmm. so, and, and maybe after, I mean, it should have yeah. life after. <laughs> I mean, I, obviously there'd be a community council, right. for God willing, a lot of those individuals would become a part of that. We wanted to know if we can get a commitment on yes, an can. advisory we, board. So currently we're, we're actually scheduled to appear before the CB13 Land Use Committee okay. on May 7th. Um, this is just a recent development. Um, so we'll be happy to discuss specific arrangements regarding that at that time. Okay. We'll also present the updated design. So one of the things we're, we are doing is we will, we're submitting preliminary design to the Public Design Commission um, for their May 14th meeting. Okay. Um, so in anticipation of that, we, we will be meeting with CB13 um, okay. uh, on May 7th. And then we, and we can discuss want to talk a little bit more about the structure. Yeah, the, in, in terms of the advisory committee, um, we're open to any recommendations. Typically, monthly may be a little much, but quarterly yeah, yeah, may quarterly. work. Quarterly by, you know, so yeah. that would be fine. Alrighty, great. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you for your, your work on this. Uh, thank you, sir. We're excited to. Feels like it's been about a year and a half, <laughs> two yeah. years we've been working yeah. on this, and want to thank you for your uh, commitment. Well, he, he's been working on it uh, for, for that long, but 40 years, wow. Yeah, the, wow. the wow. department is fully committed. Yeah. Um, we have a good staff to uh, see this through, and I will yeah. say um, uh, we've received great assistance from the mayor's office as yep. well in terms of just interagency inter coordination and Department Design and Constructions are the one who's actually doing this. So um, they're responsible for getting this thing designed and built in the end, um, and we're making sure they do so. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Councilman Richards. We have been joined at this time by Councilman Rory Lansman. Um, I wanna thank you for your commitment to uh, working with the community, the community board, the civics, the local elected officials uh, through the process, because that's very important. Um, I do have one question, though, um, following up on something that Councilman Richards asked. Will there be a public hearing or some kind of public uh, input to where the actual lines of the new precinct go? Because we've heard, you know, we've heard a little here, a little there, and I, I think that the, the Mont it's not my district, but I think the Montefiore Cemetery may be a good mark, but um, I think that uh, certainly um, the local community and the local elected officials along with the community board would like to uh, see those lines before they're promulgated. Mm -hmm. So I would ask. Yeah, so our Office of Management Analysis and Planning is, is in charge of that. We'll all defer to, we, we can get you an answer on uh, specific coordination. Okay. That's, that's possible. We would appreciate that uh, answer coming to, uh, to the committee. Um, Councilman Lanceman, anything? No, he's good. He's happy there's a new precinct <laughs> coming. Uh, well, I want to thank you for your answers today. I remember when the 107th was built. Yes, I'm sure you yes, I do. We talked about that. You know how important a moment this is to you guys. It's a big deal. It's a big, we've been wandering in the desert of Eastern <laughs> Queens for 40 years. Not unlike the Israelites, but uh, <laughs> they didn't, <laughs> this is our version of the promised land. So uh, I want to thank you for that. And with that, uh, we dismiss you as a, and thank you again. Um, we have one more person to testify this morning. That is uh, Richard Hellenbrecht, who uh, is a member of Community Board 13 in Eastern Queens, my constituent, also a past chair of Community Board 13. Put him on the clock for an hour. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Mr. Hellenbrecht, please. Please just swear in or you don't got to get sworn okay. in, but right. if you would state your name for the record. Thank you. My name is Richard Hellenbrecht. Uh, I am a uh, proud and happy resident of the 105th Precinct Community Board 13 for about 45 years. I've uh, been a member of Community Board 13 for 30 years. 
uh, just last year and uh, been a land use chair for uh, a good part of that. Um, and I'm very pleased uh, to be here today. This is a very happy occasion. I know I speak for uh, all of the civic associations, both north and south. Uh, we have all been, for the whole 30 years that I've been involved, um, uh, this has always been number one priority on the capital budget um, area. And uh, everybody has been totally supportive of having a new precinct in the south. And we're very happy to see the 116. Uh, finally, moving forward, I thank the uh, the council members, and I certainly thank the mayor for uh, stepping up and, uh, and moving with this. We've, we've had a lot of tangles over the years with uh, various people, and, uh, and this, this is uh, tremendous to move forward. Um, my only concern is, uh, uh, and it has been brought up before, is the parking. Um, and uh, I was concerned when I saw the plans and the layouts of the parking uh, spaces and whatnot. Uh, knowing at the 105, uh, parking is up on the sidewalk for the most part, uh, if you go there, uh, which yes, is, is not very attractive to the community, and it's not very good use of the you know, public sidewalk. It seems to be a common issue around precincts throughout the city um, of New York. I'm afraid it is. Even and, and the 105 is a low-density community, as you know, as is the site for the 116, but um, I was just near the 5th precinct, and oh my God, yeah. much worse. Yeah, well. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping the 163 spaces that they've provided are going to be enough. I'm a little concerned that one of the parking spots, parking lots, is pretty far removed across uh, the street uh, from the precinct, and it might encourage police not to park there and park on the street instead. I, I hope that, uh, that we can police that and, uh, and watch it very carefully. Uh, I was very pleased years ago to be uh, at the groundbreaking of the satellite. Uh, with Congressman Meeks and many, many other people, and that has been a tremendous help uh, to, uh, to, to the North and the South, uh, particularly the South, um, and, uh, but it has not been the full answer. So the only real answer is, uh, is this full precinct, so we look forward to that. Um, as the Councilman uh, Chairman stated, um, the 105th Precinct, the Community Board 13, it's about 12 or 13 miles long, and it's only about one to two miles wide in most places. So it makes it very difficult. Um, at the precinct itself, currently the 105 is located way at the north. Uh, so to get from the north to the south with the Cross Island Parkway, uh, which is jammed most of the time, uh, it, it's really almost impossible. It takes a lot of time. When we first started this, uh, our statistics uh, for response to, uh, to crimes were the worst in the city. Uh, they may still be, I haven't looked recently, but I think this will go a long way towards fixing that. Uh, I think this will also help out the NCO program, which is being implemented at the end of this month, as a matter of fact, in the 105. And I think that planning is going very well and, and will, uh, will help uh, everybody in the precinct. Um, again, I appreciate the cooperation of all of the civics. Uh, I was involved early on in the selection process. As it moved forward, uh, I was not uh, involved, but, uh, but certainly very happy and, and worked with uh, Bess Tabitham that was mentioned before. I know she's been uh, um, a real uh, lead on this. Um, so again, I thank, uh, I thank the council members. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing the design, uh, the next level of the design that's coming up on uh, May 7th. And I look forward to uh, uh, being part of this process as it goes forward for the award of the contract and uh, breaking ground and moving forward. Well, we want to thank you for your advocacy. Um, this really has been a team effort uh, all the way from North Shore Towers down to Meadowmere and every civic in between. And someday, if you're in my office, I'll show you the responses I got from the civic leaders after I sent them an email, and at least in my community. Um, I got like uh, close to a dozen responses, which were just you know jaw dropping yep. uh, disbelief, uh, which is how I react <laughs> when I got the call from the administration. Um, I certainly uh, the points you brought up, we will certainly follow up on. Uh, parking, of course, is a uh, tremendous concern no matter where you are. Even in even in the um, the less dense areas of Eastern Queens, it's still becoming a, an issue uh, for us. So we will watch that carefully, um, Mr. Richards. Anything? Thank you, Richard, and I want to thank the community board for uh, their partnership uh, in getting this done. Uh, 
once again, just pointing back to many years ago, even before I was elected, I remember this being uh, the number one priority for uh, Community Board 13. So we look forward to uh, getting this done uh, and, and obviously ar around the issues of parking. I don't think they'll have a choice but to park <laughs> in that particular <laughs> lot, so I'm not really concerned about if they will. I don't think they'll really have a choice when they <laughs> when these the blocks are very narrow over there and there's only so many spots to, to, to go by. So, um, But we hope that it'll be enough. <laughs> hope is a, is a strong word. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your partnership. Thank, and thank you. you for and I today. think we've probably set a record for uh, passing under ULERP. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it, gone it's quickly, it's yes. Gone very quickly it, and shockingly so. Yeah. Also, we sit now know when city planning wants to really devote resources to things, to how quickly yeah. they can move. <laughs> so I think there's ups and downs in this, but, <laughs> but thank you. Very good. Thank you very you much. Know, our community doesn't have many civic. We have schools. Um, <laughs> That's for the, and libraries, those are our great, you know, we don't have a lot of, it. it's mostly homeowning and um, garden department type complexes um, up and down Eastern Queens. So uh, this is a very exciting day. Um, it's interesting, we went, I know you looked at many, many sites and you came back to everything old is new again, right? Yeah. So we came back home. So uh, I want to thank you again for making uh, the long journey uh, from Eastern Queens to, to uh, 250 Broadway today. And again, thank you, Richard, for your advocacy. Um, you and uh, the other civic leaders and certainly all the chairs of Community Board 13, because really I think every single one of them uh, was involved because that's how long it's taken, the, the entire existence of uh, the Community Board. Uh, we know Sue Narika was there for 33 years, God rest her soul. So uh, thank you. Um, and if there's any other members of the public that would like to testify on this? We rarely get so u such unanimity on a project. So um, again, I want to thank uh, everybody for being here this morning. As there are no other people willing or wishing to testify, I am going to close this hearing. This application will be laid over. Uh, that concludes our meeting for today. Thank you all of attending. Oh. oh, and let me just say thank you to my deputy oh, chief of staff, Devin E. Brown, who's done a lot of work on this. And thank, thank you, you to the committee staff, of course, um, for all the work they have done to get us to this point and all the work they will do uh, to get us uh, home. So, and thank you again, Mr. Heller uh, and the police department for getting us to this moment. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you.